In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a short movie using iMovie 11 for Mac. The first thing I like to do is create a projects folder. And in that folder, I have other folders. I have an audios folder for my sound and voiceovers. I have an images folder for all my stills. And a videos folder for the videos that I've already gone through. And these are the ones that I really like and I want to use. So let's go ahead and open up iMovie. I'm going to go to the applications folder on my loading dock and I'll click on iMovie. If you've used iMovie before, you might see some clips down here from your previous import. That's normal. Um, if you don't see this screen at all, one thing you can do is just go to File, New Project, and this template will pop up. But we're going to use this more professional no theme template, and we're going to give it a name. So I'll call it my last name and the word video. Um, you also have to choose between widescreen or standard. Now, if your camera does not shoot in high definition, it's probably going to be standard. If you are shooting in high definition, then it's widescreen. High definition is this 16 by 9 ratio. So it's a very wide, like you see in movie theaters, type of uh, format. So I'm going to stick to standard because that's what my point and shoot shoots. 30 frames per second is fine. And I'll leave this unchecked and I'll hit create. Let's talk about the interface of iMovie real quickly. This is your event library. Think of this as a like a library with your content. This is your event browser. This is where you see visually what's in your library. This is your projects pane. This is basically your, the, your timeline. This is the heart of your project up here. And here is your viewer window. So this is what the viewer will see when you cut and edit your movie. Let's go ahead and bring in some content in our iMovie project. I'm going to go to File, Import, and I'll go to Movies, and I'll go to my Projects folder where I already have a Videos folder, and I'll bring in these top .avi files. iMovie likes .avi, it also likes .move. The other thing I want to do is create a new event. So I want to give this a name, and I'll call it Video Project, and I'll keep this at Optimize Video checked. And I want to make sure I copy the files. I don't move the files, but I copy them. That way there's always the original in that folder. And then I'll hit import. So this is going to create a new event down here in my event library. Now if I want to bring these clips up to my timeline to make a movie, the first thing I want to do is find my little playhead, which is this red line, and scrub across my video footage. This is called scrubbing. And so what you do is you find your beginning point, and then you find your end point, and then you drag that entire clip up to the timeline. So let me explain. I'm going to have Suzette in this video open up and introduce herself. So I want to start the clip before she starts talking. So she gives me a nod, and I'm going to click and hold and drag until she stops talking. Now, you really want to play this back so that you know you grab the right clip. So I'm just going to take my mouse and bring over the playhead to the very beginning. So I'm just, I'm not even holding the mouse, I'm just using my fingers and gliding the playhead over. And now I can play the video clip. Hi, my name is Suzette Cook, and today I'm going to show you how to take a photograph not using a fancy SLR camera, but using a manual set point and shoot camera. Okay, that's exactly what I want. So now I can grab the middle of this clip and drag it to my timeline up at the top. Notice when you drag it up to your timeline, you get your video footage and your audio. So if it's really loud, cook and, today. and you can look at this audio meter here. If you see this in the red, that means it's hot and you want to bring that audio down. So if I wanted to bring the audio down, I could just drag this line all the way down. Just make sure you do this for all your video clips so that some are not louder than others. Okay, so you really want to be consistent with your audio. That's important. By the way, if you see this over here to the side, these are all different buttons that you can add things like music, photographs that might be an iPhoto, how you do your fonting and your text slides. I do cross dissolves. 
These are all other features of iMovie. So I'm just going to close out of this so that I have more room in my event browser. So let's add one more clip just so I can show you how to do that. I'm going to use this B-roll clip of Suzette taking a photograph of this gentleman walking up the stairs. I'm going to make sure I start at a clean picture. So this is not clean. There's a big pole in the way. So I'm going to come over here where it's a clean image of her. Then I'm going to click and hold and drag, and I'm going to drag it to a part where she's not moving her camera. So right before, right about there. Now I can take this clip and drag it to my timeline up here in the top. You can play this clip at the top just like you would down here in the vent browser. All you do is get your playhead where you want it to go and you Not hit your space bar and it'll play right there in the viewer window. And use the space bar to stop. So let's talk about photographs. iMovie works seamlessly with iPhoto and to find iPhoto you can click on this little uh, camera icon here and get to your pictures on your computer. So this would work if iPhoto is your default photo browser. So say you bring in pictures from your camera and you bring them on your Mac and iPhoto is set up as your default photo browser. You can come in here and grab photos and drag and drop them into your timeline. But I don't have my system set up that way. If I want to bring photos into my timeline, I don't go to File Import Movies like I do for videos. Instead, I simply drag and drop. So I find my video projects folder, so it's a great thing that I put all my content in one folder. And in here, I can just drag and drop my photographs right into my timeline. If you're dragging your pictures and you realize that you've put too many in, you can simply just click on the photograph and do delete entire clip, and that will get rid of the image. One of the things you'll notice with iMovie, which is kind of a uh, negative is that it automatically puts a Ken Burns effect on these photographs. Notice how my photos are zooming in and zooming out. You really only want to do this when it's appropriate. When you do it too much, it looks amateur. You really want to do it when there's a mood or something that you're trying to convey when you zoom in and zoom out. That being said, I want to take this Ken Burns effect off of all my pictures because it's not the right topic to do something like that. So anytime you're on an image, notice how, or a video for that matter, this little button pops up. It looks like a gear. It does it on the videos too. This gives you more options. If I want to take that Ken Burns effect off, I can click on that button that looks like a gear and go down to cropping, Ken Burns, and rotation. Notice how Ken Burns is highlighted. I want to take that off and just do fit. Now fit means that the picture will be the size that it is originally. So if your photograph is not tall enough, it'll have these black bars. Or if it's not wide enough, it'll have black bars on the side. If you want to crop your picture so that it fits in that window, you can do crop and you can adjust these green handles accordingly by just clicking and dragging and then hit done. And that will fill your frame and take off that Ken Burns effect. You have to do this for each photograph. So if I wanted this one, I would just come over here, go to crop, crop this gentleman in the photograph, and then hit done. Sometimes you want to split a clip in half. Say I have this photograph of Suzette taking a picture, or this video, and I want to use the other half of it somewhere else in the video. I can just stop at a point where I want to split the clip. I can control click and do split clip. This creates two clips right next to each other. It's the same sequence, nothing is happening, it still runs very smoothly, but they're now two separate clips. If I wanted to, I could take this second clip and move it somewhere else in the video so that these are separated. If I mess up and I want to bring the clips back together, I simply drag the clip back over and I select both clips and then I do a control click join clip and that'll bring the clips back together again if I mess up. So let's talk about sound. I could have this video play and notice how these photos are silent. That's not good, it's kind of eerie. So I want to take some of that natural sound that's in some of my b-roll and place it under these pictures. 
To do that, I can simply click on the video here and see how long these clips are. This is 4 seconds, and see that 4S? This is 4 seconds. So I know together I need 8 seconds of sound. I can come down here and click over this and drag 8 seconds of sound. And of course I would listen to this. And then I can hold Shift Command and drag, holding Shift Command, this up to the first clip. And I can also move this clip around. So if you want to bring in a voiceover, I'm going to go back to my audio folder that's in my project folder. And I can drag and drop this audio clip, which is a voiceover, onto my project. Now if it turns green, it means the audio clip will be under the entire project, which is not what I want. But if you have a voiceover under the project, the entire project, you do want it to be green. In this case, I just want it to be under a partial part. So I'm just going to put my playhead here and then iMovie will cut off the audio when the visuals stop. So if I play this clip or here, audio. I'm basically notice how I'm cut off. So that's how you bring in a voiceover. If I want to extend this audio clip, I can double click on it and extend it to however long, you know, up to 24 seconds. So I can extend the clip once it's on the timeline. Let's bring in sound. It's the same way. If this is a music clip, and I just want it under those photographs. Again, I put my playhead there, and iMovie will cut it off. So let's just hear what it sounds like, and then it just cuts off. Now we want to do what's called fonting, or lower thirds, or supers. To do that, you want to click on this T tool in your uh, buttons here. And here, you can click on lower thirds, and you can actually drag and drop this lower thirds icon right onto the first frame or when you introduce your character. So you want it to turn blue so that's right on top of the image. I can come in here and type Suzette's name. I can also type in a title. Usually these supers or lower thirds are about six to eight seconds. So I'm going to make it a little bit longer by double clicking on it and changing this to eight seconds. If I want to add a produced by slide at the very end, to do that I can just click on one and drag and drop this at the very end of my clip. Then I can choose a color, I'll choose black to be very conservative, and I can go in here and type in my name. Produced by. If I use music, I also can put credit for the music, so music from freeplaymusic.com com as well and that's always a good idea to show where you got things if you have a photograph that someone else gave you you really want to font it where you got it while the picture is showing in your movie now I want to show you how to do cross dissolves which are transitions between your sequences if you click on what looks like this hourglass or this timer you'll call up the, your cross dissolves and your transitions so I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop these in between my sequences and what this does is this creates kind of this smooth transition between things, so it's not so rough. If I want to make these shorter, I can double click and make these shorter, one second even. The one thing you want to make sure you do is you don't cut off if someone's saying something, you don't cut them off with a transition. So to do, make sure you don't do that, you can always add more onto the clip. So I can come in here and add more onto what she's saying so that I'm not clipping off the last few words. The last thing you want to do is share your video. So you can share it on Vimeo or YouTube. Let's do YouTube. You want to make sure you have a YouTube account and log in. Make sure you change all of this to things that make sense. I'm going to give this a title that people can easily search for. I also wrote in a description. I also wrote some keywords too to make it search friendly. I made it large and you want to click off this make this movie personal. Then click next then hit publish and this will publish it on YouTube which will give you an embedded link that you can put website. Say you want to work on your project on a Mac, a different Mac at a later time in the day, you need to save your project onto an external hard drive or thumb drive. I'm going to click on this project library here and I can see here that this is on my current hard drive and I have a thumb drive here it launched on my desktop that I'm going to drag and drop into that folder. So I just click and hold and drag right into my thumb drive. 
and I want to make sure I copy the project and events into that. So that makes a copy of my project on my thumb drive. In this tutorial, you learned how to use iMovie 11 to edit a basic video. There's still a lot more to learn. You just have to kind of play around and find things. But this gets you started.